In section 3.4, we're talking about contingency tables, and we've actually seen some of these previously in lessons, so it, we'll just be getting a little bit more detail with them. Uh, our example from 3.10, uh, the table that we used for calculating the probabilities for when we were given their gender and their uh, the hand that they write with uh, is given here. This table is called a contingency table or a two-way table. Notice that each row and column provides information on categories such as um, gender, and then also that gender is separated by the hand that they write with, and then also you can view it the other way. It's, it's the column, the row gives us their uh, what hand they write with, and then that is separated into their gender. So uh, that's a two-way table or a contingency table. So by definition, a contingency table or a two-way table is a table where two, two categories of data are related. Example 320, the following contingency table shows the survival status and the demographics of passengers on the ill-fated Titanic. So number one, or part A, I mean, calculate the totals by passenger and survival status. So all we're doing here is we're adding up the rows. Um, notice the two um, categories that are are used here are survived and died, and then there's that is broken up into uh, other other subcategories. So first of all, 334 plus 1360 for the first group is going to be 1,694. Then we have 318 plus 104, and that is 422. Then we have 29 plus 35, that's going to be 64. And this one's going to be 45. Uh, then we can also add across. So if we add up all the people who survived, 334 plus 318 plus 29 plus 27 is going to be 408 or 708. If we add up all the people who died, 1,360 plus 104 plus 35 plus 18, we're going to get 1,517. And then if we add up the total all together, 15, 17 plus 708, we get 2225. And I'm going to double check my bottom row also, 1694 plus 422 plus 64 plus 45. And yes, we get the same number, so that's good. It means we have our totals and they should be correct. Part B, we're going to calculate the probability of a randomly selected individual being a man who survived. So in our table, the men who survived are listed right here. So probability of man who survived. And when they give us a table like this, we don't have to do all the formulas and stuff. We can just look at the table. So the top number is 334. And then the bottom number is for our total, that is the 2,225. And we will just divide that out to make a decimal number, 334 divided by 2,225, and we get 0 0.150 would be our probability there for that one. Part C, calculate the probability of a randomly selected individual being a girl or a boy. So this one, it doesn't specify if they survived or not. So this is just probability of girl or boy. And we can use our more generic formula since these events are disjoint. The total number of girls on the trip was 45. So that would be 45 out of 2,225. The total number of boys, 64 over 2,225, and if you were going to try to use your more general formula, you'd have zero over 2,225 because there are no uh, girls and boys. There are no people who could be chosen who are girls and boys. So then we add this together. We're going to get 111, it looks like, over 2,225. Oh, that's not 111, 109. And then we're going to divide that on our calculators. So 109 divided by 2,225. And we're going to get 0 0.049. So that is the chances or the probability of randomly selecting a person who was either a 
a boy or a girl. And uh, again, no survival status uh, noted there. For part D, calculate the probability of a randomly selected individual being a woman or a person who died. So probability of woman or died. Now this one, we would have probability of woman plus probability of died, and then minus probability of woman and died. Okay, so we've got to use our more general formula because these events are not disjoint. So the probability that somebody was a woman on this trip was 422 out of 2,225, plus the probability that a person died. Okay, so let me, here's this one and this one. The probability that a person died would be this one. So 1,517 over 2,225. And then minus the ones who are in both groups. So the ones that are in both groups uh, would be the women who died, and that is 104. So minus 104 over 2,225. Try to keep things color-coded nicely there for us. So if we uh, add up those numerators, 422 plus 1517 minus 104, that gives us 1,835 over 2,225. And that gives us a probability of 825 when we round that off to three decimal places. So that would be our probability for selecting a woman or a person who died. For part E, we are going to calculate the probability of a randomly selected individual being a boy given that they died. Okay, so probability of boy given that they died. So that's that other notation with that line. So we are only in this case considering people who died. So we're only looking at this group. And from that group, we're interested in how many were boys given that they died. So that's going to be 35 boys who died out of the total of 1,517 people who died. So again, that the given part means the condition is we're only considering people in that group of people who died. So 35 divided by 1,517, and we're going to get that that is equal to 0 0.023 for our probability there. For letter F, calculate the probability of a randomly selected uh, of randomly selecting two individuals where at least one is a man. So probability of at least one man. Remember that's one minus the probability that there are zero men. Okay, so one minus that would mean probability of getting woman. Well. Actually, let's do it this way. We'll use our notation. The probability of not getting a man and not getting a man again. Which means it's the probability of not getting a man times the probability of not getting a man given that you already didn't get a man the first time. All right. So 1 minus the probability of not getting a man is all of these other groups who aren't men. So remember the easy way to do that is 2,225 minus the men. So 2,225 minus 1694 gives us 531 over that total of 2,225 times. Now, if you chose somebody and for the second person, um, we're finding out the probability that they're not a man, given that the first person was not a man. Well, there's only 530 people who are not men left, and there's only 2,224 people left to choose from. So uh, let's go ahead and put this in. 1 minus 531 over 2,225 
times 530 divided by 2,224. And we're going to get the probability of choosing at least one man, now that we're back to that, at least one man, that was the ori original question, is 0 0.943, if we round that off. 0 0.943. So with those contingency tables, that wraps this up. Uh, section 3.4, there are eight graded problems. Uh, go ahead and get to work on those. And remember that if you get stuck, please make sure to let me know and ask me some questions.